said no to the enemy. That's the last time you see that sickness. I declare in the name of Jesus, Yeshua Abashiga, the one who opens up, and no one can shut up. The one who shuts up, and no one can open. My cattle to this nation, the breaker has gone ahead of me. I declare, let every valley be exalted. Let every mountain be leveled. I call you as an advance. Hello, Polua Care, God's will. Welcome. Welcome, Nike. Welcome, Astrology. Please just copy the link and share the link. Copy the link on the, with the three dots where you can see add a comment. Just click on the three dots and share. Share, share, share. I'm waiting. Hey, I'm so excited. Welcome, Chick Ladies Trip. Click on the three dots beside the other comments and share. You know, I'm going to be bold in the place of prayer. I'm so excited. The Lord showed us. Welcome, D. Someone who has. I'm super, super, super excited. This is like the very first time I'm going live officially on the Lamb Tribe. So it's. It's exciting and I know that God has a lot, a lot for us today. Alright, so please help me click on the three dots and share. Click on the three dots and share this link now. Please, if you are from the Live Again community, click the three dots and share on the Live Again community that you are. Okay? Share, share, share. When you're done, just type done. When you're done, type done. I'm Say waiting yeah, for a few yeah, more people yeah. and then we'll start. Some people think we are hey. Say yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And to give you When you're done sharing, just type done. That D has shared. Who else is sharing? Hey, hey, hey. Woo! Enough is enough. Julian. Yes. Amen. Oh, wow. Welcome, 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 everyone. Thank you so much for joining today. This is the very first episode of the Live Again series. I'm super, super, super excited because I know that God has a lot in store for us. And I want to celebrate you for taking the time you know, to join in, for taking the time to be here tonight. I know that you had several other things you had to do, but you decided to be here. So I want you to celebrate yourself for making it here. I can't see you. I can't see you clap for yourself or just give yourself a hug. You know, tell yourself, well done for showing up. Well done, well done, well done. Woo! Wow, wow, wow. Okay, for those that are wondering, who is this person? Well, this is the face behind Lamb Tribe. I have never gone live here. I went live once, but it was unofficial, right? So this is the face behind the Lamb Tribe. And the Lamb Tribe is the Live Again Movement Tribe, right? And if you don't know, Live Again is a movement that I created in 2020 after I had an encounter with God and I had Live Again for the very first time. I had never heard the word before 
right and after gaining clarity from god i set up the live again movement and since then i have been dishing out value teaching people sharing tips on how to live again and it's gone from that to the live again sessions to the live again affirmations to the live again shelter to the live again movement i'm sorry summit and then the live again in fact community it's just been God, God, God all the way. This is his initiative, all right? So you're not here by mistake. So that's what the Lamb Tribe is about. It's a Live Again Movement Tribe. And um, this is like the very first time I'm going live. I said that before. For those that are just joining us, just for them to know, this is my first time going live on the Lamb Tribe. So that explains my excitement. In case you're wondering what's wrong with her, well, I'm really, really super, super, super excited. And today, our first topic in this um, series is a question, actually. Are you existing or are you living? Are you merely existing or are you truly living? Are you merely existing? And if you wonder, what's, which one is this one again? What's the difference? I'm living. I'm alive. I'm, you know, you know the saying that a living dog is better than a dead lion. Ah, well, I beg to differ because you can't liken yourself to a dog. You are a human being created with the image and likeness of God, with the spirit and power of God. So you can't. You should not be a living dog. You should not be a living dog. If you need to be a living anything, you should be a living lion because your father is the lion of the tribe of Judah. So the things that we say and we say we're just saying them, they have a way of making us, you know, reduce ourselves, our godness to animalness, all right? So are you merely existing? Welcome, Udwak. Are you merely existing or are you truly living? Now, to be able to explain my question, I had um, I had a vision one time and it was an army of women lots and lots of women well dressed some of them wearing suits you know well made up looking really nice and fantastic but they were as though they were walking dead so I don't know if you remember those people those movies where vampires would wake up human beings would die and then they would wake up as vampires or they, they sucked blood or something it's the way they walk like you know like zombies that's what i saw in the vision and i was wondering what is this what is this right and i later discovered that those people that were walking like that women were 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 women that have been battered by life beaten by life life has bossed them from left right center they have faced difficult situations painful situations and they just literally died after that day. I remember um, when um, um, Ada Ahmed died and I put up a post on, on our page and someone said the day something happened to her was the day she died. And that person was like, the day a particular thing happened to her was the day she died. But you'll be wondering, but this person is alive now, this person is living. The day she died, meaning that something died inside her that day. Something died that day and she has not been able to get herself since that thing happened a lot of times what we do as women is to just mask up the pain we mask it up we don't deal with it so we just try to cover up so our neighbor will know what we're going through so we we'll look like we're strong then we mask up the pain so it's like you injured and then you're covering it which takes me back to the second vision i had i had a flash and i saw an athlete trying to run but the athlete was wounded and i was like what is this and the lord was trying to explain to me that a lot of people are trying to run but they are wounded and please help me answer this question if a wounded athlete is trying to run what will happen please help me help me answer the question this is not one person coming to come and speak to you and just speak we're going to interact right so if a, imagine a wounded athlete, I mean, we just saw Toby Amusan, the athlete that made Nigeria proud. Imagine that in that field where you were watching Toby, there was someone that was wounded and trying to run. What will happen to that person? I'm waiting for your comments. Okay, T says they can't go far. Okay, anybody else? Anybody else? Anybody else? The athlete is wounded, but the athlete is trying to run. What will happen to that athlete? Please help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. What will happen to that athlete? 
I'm waiting for your comments. What will happen to the athlete that is wounded and trying to run? What will happen to that athlete? They will fall, okay? So it's only T that is answering the question. So the award for the most participatory is <laughs> two. T! I wish I had a bell. Thank you, T. They can't go far, they will fall, right? When an athlete is trying to run, what is the, when an athlete is wounded, what is the first thing that the athlete needs to do? Or what needs to happen to that athlete for the athlete to be able to run again? Please tell me. When an athlete is wounded and that athlete desires to run, because it can be very painful, you're fired up, you want to run, you've, you've practiced, you've done everything, and then on that um, field, the athlete injures. What is that athlete supposed to do if that athlete wants to run and even run well? What is the thing that that athlete needs to do? Avala says he gets more injured. Exactly. Because there's already a wound. For example, if it's a sprain on the leg and you try to run, the sprain will get more sprained and get worse and can lead to more injury. I remember I was, um, so recently, um, the Queen of Elizabeth um, died, so I have been following Diana Princess, Diana's story on YouTube and trying to understand what happened to her and everything like that. Somebody was saying that the way Diana was injured in the, in the car, uh, that, that, that the witness that saw her first couldn't carry her to the hospital because if he had carried her, he would have injured her more. So he had to call an ambulance to come and attend to her. If not, if he was able to carry Princess Diana to the hospital, she would have survived. So, someone is saying the athlete needs healing. He needs to stop and get treatment. He needs to pause. He needs to calm down. He needs to, okay, yes, I want to run. I want to do all of this, but I'm injured. Face the facts. A lot of times people go through things and they deny what they are going through. They try to, to blame every other person but themselves. They try to blame other things and try to focus on other things and get engrossed in other things. For example, an athlete that is injured going to go and start greeting people in the audience, the spectators. Is that not misplaced priority? So a lot of times when women go through hardship, hard situations, painful situations, difficult situations, and they now decide, okay, let me go and face my job, let me face my children, let me face my business, let me be going to church, or let me just be doing activity, 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 thinking that that thing would automatically treat the wound. It is likened to an athlete that is injured, and instead of going to go and treat himself, or at least calling for help, he's now going around trying to make the spectators believe that he's okay. How will you look at such an athlete? And so God showed me that vision. And I said, what is the, what is the solution? What is the way forward? What is the, what, what, like, what is this? I will tell you about the solution later. I will tell you about the solution later. And I'm sure you already know, right? Healing is part of it. But I will tell you what God showed me about the, the wound and the degree of wound and how those wounds can be treated and healed. I will tell you about that, okay? So, are you existing? Back to the question. Are you existing? Are you merely existing or are you truly living? What does it mean to exist? What does it mean to exist? It means to be absent. It means to be present but absent. Follow me, follow me. I hope I don't lose you. I don't want to lose you. I want you to follow me. It means to be present, but absent. It means to be deflated. It means to be, to be, you know, not full of life. It means not living life to the full. It means being empty, just empty. You know, being lost out of touch you know just numb numb tired of life in pain or what you'd rather call living a fake life 
that's what it means to merely exist it's like it's like um a house girl in a house where the madam is maltreating now let's assume that the madam is life and life is the one maltreating the person right and this madam has bas bolstered maltreated her donna and she's so deflated that whenever everybody is in the sitting room she stays in the basement for example or in the passage or she stays outside and then she's she's so timid she's so you know she just you know she's just so like a a, a, a walking dead so she's alive but barely living that's what it means to be merely existing the person is alive but they are barely living it's like it's not you that is living it's just like a shadow like you're not you're going through life but you are not life is not going through you i don't know how to explain it I, the, the 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 easiest way i can explain this is when i had an experience in school i was um becoming suicidal i had an extra year and it was not something I expected. I thought I was going to come out, you know, finish school smooth and everything. And when it really became bad was when my classmates were telling me that they were not coming back. Like they were not, nobody, anybody I asked, oh, how far now? How was your result? Oh, fantastic. So I kept, I started feeling as if I was the only one that had the extra year. And trust the devil to magnify. You look at your life, see your life, you're a failure. Look at your life, all your mates. You know, I don't know what that situation is for you. All your mates have given birth, all your mates have gotten married, all your mates have gotten a job, all your mates have, you know, whatever, jackpot. I don't know what it is for you. But that was what it is, it was for me at that time. And I remember walking in engineering one day and I was feeling lost. I have never felt that way in my life. I felt like it wasn't me that was walking, like it was, breeze could just blow me. Do you understand? Like, I was not feeling myself on the ground. Like, what is this life about? I beg, let me just, you know, I beg, there's nothing in this life. I was feeling so lost. People were seeing me, but I was not seeing them. I don't know if you've been in that kind of situation before, or you can relate to what I'm saying. I got to that point. And then one day I was in my room in school and I was looking at the wall and I heard, why don't you just end it? Why don't you just end it? End it. That was my first time having suicidal thoughts and that wasn't my last time i'll save you the details but i've had suicidal thoughts again and again after that time but i'm trying to give you an example of what it means to exist that's like a close example to 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 what i wanted to what i'm trying to say today another time was a time when i was going through so much in life in marriage in everything and I was working, I had a very wonderful mouth watering, fantastic job. The kind of job that you'd be like, God, when? God, is the only ha -ha? That kind of job. But I was existing. Beautiful woman like me, I would wear my makeup, I would get into the, the, the office, I would lock, I had an office to myself, I would lock the office and I would cry. I would cry a river. When I'm done, I would clean my eyes put brown powder and bounce you know you know what I'm saying but I was dying dying slowly because that feeling that happened to me back then in school something similar came up again and I felt lost I felt out of touch welcome joy welcome tea top I felt out of joy I felt like I, I know join do you understand that's how I felt that's how I felt so to exist means to, like everything I mentioned now, these two examples are the closest. It's like those people that want to kill themselves and they're just walking on the road and cars are passing. They're not even hearing the horn. Yes. Another example is you wake up without feeling excited about life. You just wake up, you're like, I beg you. <laughs> Nothing to look forward to. Nothing. I beg you. You are constantly tired. You don't know why you're tired. You don't even know what is doing you, but you just know that you're tired of life. Life don't tire you. Life has, you know, you've gone through several challenges back to back to back to back, or maybe they are paced, but the one you went through the last time, you've not recovered, and that one has not happened. Like, that's like, I'm trying to explain what it means to merely exist. You're not waking up to look, you're not looking forward to anything when you wake up. And if you're not looking forward to something, it's like something to just pass time. But you are not 
you understand? You're not living, you're not living your life to the full. You're just, you're just, look at just manage, I beg. Any time just manage life, I beg. Now, anything life give me, now go take anything where, you know, you're just, anything where you see, you take. You're not, they're not the one deciding. You're, you're not the one that is in control, as in in charge. You are just anywhere, belle face, anywhere, that is what it means to merely exist. Now, what does it mean to truly live? What does it mean to truly live? John 10, 10 says, and Jesus speaking, he said, I am come. I am come, which means not I came, oh, I am come, which means anytime, see, I am present. I am present. I am. I am come. That you, put your name there, that any for me. Ah, I want you to get this thing. Put your name there. Put your name there. I am come. That any former would have life and have it to the full. Hey, <laughs> ooh, type it in the comments. Type it, type it, type it, type it, type it. I am come. I am come. I am come. That any former would have life and have it to the full. If it wasn't important to Jesus for you to have a full life, he wouldn't make that statement. If he was okay with you existing, I tell you, he won't make that statement. He said, I am come that they might have life and have it to the full, to the full. I can't see you typing it in the comments. Is it that you don't want to have a full life or you don't understand the gravity of this scripture? He says, I am come. Type it in the comments. I am come that awele. I am come that abiodu. I am come. Put your name there. See, it's your best right. I am come that any former would have life and not just life. Life to the full. <laughs> to the full. Some translations say, I am come that they might enjoy life. <laughs> not manage life, oh. The day I saw this scripture, eh? And. You know, sometimes you will know a scripture, but when God reveals a scripture to you, it's different. The way this scripture, the day this scripture was revealed to me. Hey! I said, I can't accept anything less. Anything less is not see. Anything less of this thing is not what God wishes for you. Because God needs you to desire something for him to be able to activate that thing in your life, for him to be able to bring it to pass in your life. Many people have settled for less. They have settled. They have settled because there is no help in sight. There is no solution in sight. There is nothing. Let's just accept it, you know. You know. I can't kill myself. Yeah. He beats me, so let me just stay. Where do I want to go? Even if he's beating me. Even if the man is beating me, let me just stay. You know, he's not, you know, let me just stay there. This job is not really what I want, but let me just stay. You know, uh, what, are, what, what are the things that we tell ourselves? You know, let's just manage now. And, um, you know, some people have it worse. Contentment is good, but not desiring more. Ah, it's from the devil. It's from the devil because it's like you have a blank check and you decided not to, to want more. Error. Error. I am come that any for me will have life. He didn't say any for me will have death. But then he now said, you know, that he has set before us, you know, a way, life and death. And he now told us after he now said it, he said, choose life. If you don't choose life, me, I cannot do anything about it. Even though I am come that you may have life. But you need to choose life. And you choose life every day in your thoughts. In your words, in your desires, in your associations, in your aspirations, in your actions. Everything you are doing is either choosing life or choosing death. So some of you, you still look like you are living. Just like how when you cut a plant and you come back, that plant will still look as if it's alive. But greenness is not always a sign of life. So your color color and your makeup and all the colors and everything on your body and everything is not a sign of life. That is why somebody can die today and you the person will now, you will now, the person, the death will only show later. But let me tell you something. You die inside before you die outside. 
Nothing happens on the outside without first happening on the inside. I remember how my father was a fighter. He was sick for a long time, but he was fighting until one time he just got tired. If you feed him, you will not eat. Give him food, you say he does not want. So he got to a point, he stopped opening his mouth like he wanted to die. He was tired of, he just wanted to go and rest. We tried everything. Uh, mm. Because once you, see, be, imagine he has been sick for a long time. Oh, he does not see to him. Because he, was, he still had a fight inside of him. He still had, you know, he still had hope inside him. He still had life inside him. He still did not want to give up inside. So he was fighting. But the moment he got tired inside and he said, he started, that death started inside before it happened on the outside. So many of us still look good on the outside. But just like that vision that God showed me, a lot of women are walking dead. Are walking dead. And there is, see, you know how dead things don't attract living things. It's just like a dead lizard. What do you want to go and do near the lizard, please? You want to go and admire the lizard? No, answer me. You want to go and say, oh, lizard. Hi, lizard. Oh, my God. How did you die? Oh, my God. You're dead? Is that what happens? What are the characteristics of dead things? Please explain to me. What are the characteristics of dead things? I can tell you one. It smells. Help me. Keep it coming. What do dead things attract? 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 Please help me. Are we here? If you're here, please make your presence felt. What do dead things attract? When something is dead, what happens? What, you know, what do dead things attract? Dead things smell. Dead things attract deadlier things. Because a, a, a lizard that is dead will attract maybe a scorpion or something that is trying to come and eat the carcass of the dead lizard, for example. Right? And some of you are wondering, why am I not attracting the right things to me? Am I not, why am I not having the right friends, the right network? Why does it seem like bad things are happening to me? Why does it seem like I'm struggling anyhow? Why does it seem like anything I do does not work out? Why does it seem like, you know, and then you're wondering, what is happening to you? Deadness attracts deadness. If you're merely existing, all that you attract will be things that are merely existing. You attract a job that is just merely existing. You attract friends that are just merely existing. You attract a husband, a wife, or whatever that is just merely existing. Everything you do will just be merely, merely, merely. That is just how it will be. Why? Because there is already death inside. So what does it mean to truly live? It means life to the full. The life that Jesus died for and promised you, you are living it. It means living from the inside out, not from the outside in. So you are not moved by your circumstances and things that happen around you. You are moved, you are, your spirit man is alive. You are alive, so you make everything around you come to life. See, cat, higher. I cannot enter a place. And the place is dead and I will leave that place dead because I carry the life-giving Spirit of God if I walk into a place if the place was dead before it receives life but if, if somebody is dead who wants, who wants to, uh, to, to revive who who wants to revive who can a wood that is not lit up revive a wood that needs fire so you walk into a dead place and your deadness com combines with the deadness of the place and then you remain dead. And you are wondering, who is doing me? Who is this witch that is doing me? Lizzie, truly living is living from the inside out. And I'm going to share this encounter that I had in 2010. I was um, in an event in a camp meeting. And the pastor was praying and when he came up to me, he put his hand on my head and he just prayed and he walked away. What happened to me next was that I saw a light inside of me 
and I was still trying to understand what is this because my eyes are closed. Where is this light coming from? So I opened my eyes. So when I opened my eyes, I didn't see any light. When I closed my eyes, I saw the light. Follow me. I opened my eyes, I didn't see any light. I closed my eyes, I saw the light. Ah, ah, what is this? And so I left my eyes closed and inside my spirit man, inside my subconscious, I was trying to trace the light. Where is this light coming from? Where is this light? The more I was tracing the light, the more the light was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. The more I was getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until I literally did not feel myself on the ground. I felt as light as a feather and I fell down. And when I fell down, it was like a tap had been opened and I started praying in tongues and I prayed in tongues for hours. Before that day, right? Before that day, I was smiling without true joy. I was, you know, existing. I'll be laughing with everybody, but I could not explain it. Even me knew that I was not happy. I don't know how you will be. See, I don't know that you've ever been in a place where you are so grieved that your grief has become numbness. That your pain has turned into numbness. I don't know that you've ever been there. I've been there. I will eat food eh, and I would chew the food, but I will, when I swallow the food, I will not get the. Ha, ah, God. Oh, God. I will swallow the food, but I will not get the intrinsic satisfaction of the food. I will just be eating to satisfy myself. I don't know whether you've ever been there. And before then, I was looking good, you know, and I. I, I for the first time in a long time, I had peace. I was laughing, I was smiling, and this time it wasn't pretense. It wasn't like I was trying to pretend. I was really, I had so much joy inside me that I could not explain it. I felt like I was drunk. I felt like I was having ecstasy. I can't really, I can't explain what was happening to me, but I was so happy. And I was like, oh my God, I was laughing. I could, I was just laughing. And for the first time in a long time, I slept like a baby. I slept like a baby. But did anybody know what I was going through? Nobody knew. So it is living from the inside out. And you see that light I saw. Later on in life, God explained that light to me. That there is a light inside of me. That I should learn to close my eyes and disconnect from this earthly realm. To be able to connect to the light inside me. And then begin to... To operate from that place of being inside. The Bible says that greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. What is he that is in me? That light of God. The Bible says in him was life. And that life was the light of men. So life is the light of men. Which means if you don't have that light inside you. If you cannot connect to the life and the light inside you. And then operate from that place, you would exist, especially in the times that we live in. The Bible says that indeed, gross darkness shall cover the earth, right? And darkness the people. But he said what after that? He said his glory will be seen on you. But before then, he said, arise and shine for your light has come. And your light that has come is not a light that is outside because he said that there is gross darkness all over the earth. So where is that light coming from? It's coming from inside you. My mentor, that the FD, Sir Fela Jurotoye, would say, stop looking for light at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> Find the light inside you, connect to it, and walk out of the tunnel. Do you understand what I just said? Stop looking for... Some of us are looking for help everywhere but inside. We have... We send messages, I want to die, I'm hungry. We have borrowed money from almost all the apps in the world. Because now we are in the era of uh, money lending. They will even be begging you to collect money because they will give you interest that you cannot pay. Oh, help me. Oh, God. It's my, you know, you are looking at everything but inside you. If you want to truly live, you have to connect to the light inside you. There is light inside you. 
there is light inside you close your eyes sometimes don't look at the things happening because to truly live is to walk by faith and not by sight the bible says the just shall live by faith this economy i don't know what people are saying but i'm not even feeling it you know why just like isaac the bible says isaac sowed in the land and he reaped a hundredfold i don't care what is happening in the economy because i i have an economy inside i am living from the bible says the kingdom of god is within you see and there was a time you know god told me to write lessons i learned as a single woman and i just started writing them down and during my birthday period he made me to launch it as a book dear singles book is on my you can get it on on my page just click the dear singles the link is in bio at dear singles and when i wrote that book <laughs> i was surprised because these are the mistakes i made the experiences i had and god was highlighting them to me so before i even wrote that book i wasn't aware that those were mistakes i made i just felt uh, when you now told me like number one this number two i'm like oh my god are you serious like i now understood that there were things i was doing thinking there were things that were not bad or things that i thought was right or things that i did not think was you know so wrong or wrong but they were bad and bad in the eyes of god and god hated those things and god if i was a particular thing that god said to me one day he said <laughs> you know when you're a single girl Sometimes when you are dating a man, it's as if the man is your all in all. God told me, the, one of the first lessons God taught me was, you wash, she said, you, wash, you don't worship a man, you worship me. And the way he said it, as if he was angry and jealous at the same time. Like, you don't worship a man, you worship me. Do you understand? You don't put a man first, you put me first, and that man comes after. But many, prop, many things that singles do is that they, when they see man, man, yeah, he wants to marry me, man, man. They put the man first, put God second. How? The man says, don't go to church. Okay, I won't go to church. Um, um, don't, why are you wearing these clothes? Wear another clothes. Okay, he has not married you. The Bible says, submit to your own husband. He has not married you, you're already submitting because in your mind, you are practicing for marriage. Huh. See, that's one of the things that God showed me but why did i go to that particular dear singles book because the book was inside me you don't understand i god brought it out god brought out those things from inside me i wrote it and became a bestseller i sold 50 copies plus in one day the money i made from the dear singles book was more than the salary i was earning at that time so it doesn't take God anything to bless you. It doesn't take God anything to, to give you what you're asking for. But you need to understand that what God is, see, what God wants to give you is already inside you. You are the one that needs to discover it. When you discover it, you connect to that light inside you and you begin to function from a place of that light and not from anything external. You begin to truly live and not merely exist. You begin to truly live and not merely exist. Truly living is living as the God on the earth. The Bible says that we are kings and priests. We will reign on the earth. Cancel that word hustle from your dictionary. You've been saying it after this night. Stop saying hustle. Stop saying this life no balance. Stop saying things that make your life harder. He said we will reign on the earth. Anything short of reigning is merely existing. If you are not reigning yet, you are merely existing. I don't care your title, status, or position. If you have not gotten to dominion, which is where God is taking you, He said, "Be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, subdue, and have dominion." Dominion is what it means to truly live. You have a domain. I shared recently about your place of primary assignment. If you've served Nigeria, you understand what it means. You have a place of primary assignment where you are supposed to reign. He said you will reign on the earth. A Nephilim will reign on the earth. Anytime hardship tries to come near me, I remind hardship that the, the instruction, the mandates, do you understand, is to reign, not to struggle. So I don't accept 
anything less of the life that Jesus died for. To truly live is to tap into the life that Jesus died for, the one he paid the price for, and said, I am come. See, the thief has come to steal, to kill you, to make you a walking dead, to make you a man, person, to fill your mind with negative thoughts, to make you look at your life and, 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 and stay in your pain and, and dwell in your negativity and negative situations and remain in a place that God wants to remove you from. But I am come that you will have life and life abundantly. To truly live is to live as a God on the earth. You are in charge. See, let me tell you, let me explain this thing to you. And I really thank God for what God is doing tonight. And now I even see why he made me come here. You see, it's like a landlord and a tenant. A landlord is the owner of the house. And he rents it to a tenant. Now, for the period the tenant is in the house, who is in charge of the house? Please help me. Help me, please. Help me. Help me. Help me. Who is the owner of the house and who is in charge of the house after the tenancy agreement or the tenancy whatever? Who is in charge and who is the owner? Please help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Are we still here? If you are here, if you are here, bring out the fire emojis. Put the fire in the, in the comments. If you are still here, share this link. Click three dots and go and share this link. There are people that you are thinking about are supposed to be hearing what you are hearing. Go and share this link with them. Tell me who is the owner of the house and who is in charge of the house, at least for the tenancy period. Let me know. Let me know. Let me. I'm going to wait for the comments. I'm just going to relax and wait for the comments. Let me calm down. <laughs> Let me calm down and wait for the comments. Mm -hmm. What is, he said, Falaka is saying the landlord. So what's the landlord? Is he the one that is the owner? Who is in charge? Who is the owner? I'm waiting for the comments. Are we still here? For look for look at what did you mean when you said the landlord? What exactly did you mean? People are typing landlord tenant. So I don't know, right? Tenant owner. Tenant in charge. Landlord owner. Landlord tenant. And let me understand where you're coming from, okay? There's no one like you. Jesus. Haha. <laughs> Oh, there's no one like you in all the earth. I'm waiting for you now. You put us wrote tenants, landlord. Who is the owner of the house? Who is in charge of the house? The tenant is the owner till the rent expires. Mm. Tenant is the owner till the rent expires. Okay, let me just quickly explain. The landlord is the owner of the house. He bought the house, whatever he did, he built the house. So the, la the house is his. It belongs to him. But the, the tenant is the one in charge of the house for the period of the tenancy agreement. So a lot of us, what we do is that because we've been bound by religious beliefs and religious whatever and religion, we are literally waiting for God to come and... It's just like a tenant that your something happens in your house something happens like maybe the tile removes when you are staying in the house so you, you put the, the something happens in your house landlord come and do it anything happens in your house because there are things that landlord is supposed to do but you anything that happens they are waiting for landlord the landlord expects that you would maintain that house for the period that you are there, correct or correct? The landlord expects that you would not spoil his property, right? The landlord expects you to be in charge of that house for the period that you are there. You can't say, oh, it's not my business. I went out, somebody came and broke the fence. I went out, I didn't know what happened when I came back. 
you know, the ceiling has removed, so it's not my business now. Is it, am I the owner of the house? Is that what will happen? No. You will pay caution fee, or the caution fee you paid will not be refunded, right? God is the owner. He's your owner, right? He's the owner of the earth, owner of life, owner of everything, including you. But he expects you to be in charge of your life. He gave you life for a period. You're not, the life is not your own. The life is leased to you to fulfill God's purpose on this earth as a God. So Jesus Christ could not you know, be everywhere. So he decided to go and send us the Holy Spirit so that we can be God on this earth, fulfilling God's purpose in every sphere, every sector, every space. Till the glory of the Lord covers the earth as waters cover the sea. That's why he's multiplying himself in us as gods on the earth. So you are in charge of your life. God is not going to come down and, and do everything for you. God expects you to take charge of the domain he has placed you and for you to reign. That's why I love um, the late Archbishop Benton Dahosa. He said, why, why should God, what am I here for? Why should I disturb God when I'm here? Some of you have been existing, waiting for God to change your situation for you to start living. Meanwhile, God is saying, I don't understand. I am inside you. Why do you keep looking for me everywhere? I am here. I'm inside you. Connect to me. Learn to close your eyes and connect to me. Learn. Oh my god, you can't hear me. How long has this been? Wow. Can you hear me? Where did you stop hearing me? I'm so sorry about that. Where did you stop hearing me? Where did you stop? Can you hear me now? 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 Please affirm to me you can hear me now. Can you hear me? Let me move closer. Can you hear me now? Okay, you can hear me now. Okay, fantastic. Fantastic. Okay. I was saying that truly living, right, is life in Christ. Is life in Christ. Is, you know, living in Christ. You know, you can say I'm a Christian. Uh, I'm in Christ now. I'm in Christ. In, living in Christ means dead to self. Ah. Uh, where I said close your eye. That was a long time ago. Okay, close your eyes and connect to me. Okay, okay, fantastic. So that's not too long ago. Okay, okay, fantastic. So I said moving on to live, you know, truly living is living in Christ. And you might you might say, okay, I'm a Christian. Uh -uh. I go to church now. What do you mean by living in Christ? A lot of, a lot of us think that we're in Christ. But we're actually religious people. So I put up a video on my page about Sarah Jakes, um, I think it was yesterday, where I was saying that um, her father was there for her. Okay, I put up a post on Instagram 
where I was saying that Sarah Jakes and her father got me emotional. I actually cried when I was watching the video. Why? Her father was there for her. Her father showed her love. Her father was a backbone for her. Her father was a pillar for her. A lot of women, the reason why they are merely existing is because they don't, they've never experienced true love. They've never experienced true love. They've never. They think they've experienced true love, but what they've experienced is not love. Or it's just a shadow of love. So God wants us to experience him as love. Can you hear me? Please affirm to me you can hear me. Affirm to me you can hear me, please. Please affirm to me you can hear me so I don't speak and then you tell me, oh, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Please affirm to me you can hear me. Okay. So as I was saying, a lot of women think they've experienced true love, but they have not. They have not experienced true love. Right? Until you begin to understand who God is. In intimacy with God, you are able to connect to God. You are, God is not something that you kept somewhere and then you open him on Sunday. He is with you. He is in you. You are aware. You are so aware that even when you are walking on your system, you are walking on the road, you know that, ah, God is here, like I'm carrying God. It is so, it is an awareness. It's an awareness. Life in Christ is allowing Christ to conform you, allowing Christ to dictate what you do, what you say, how you live. So He's not just your Savior, He's your Lord. And if you're your Lord, you do what He says, not what you want to say or what, what somebody else is saying. And you won't even be bothered about what people will say. So truly living is life in Christ. Paul said, I am crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that lives. He said, no longer. No longer, which means there was a Paul that was living before. That one was merely existing. That one was not in Christ. He said, the life I live now, presently, is life by faith in the Son of God, not in my efforts, not in my intelligence, not in my calculation, not in my beauty, not in my achievement, nothing like that. The life I live now is life by faith in the Son of God who loves me and gave himself for me. If you want to truly live, you have to die to self, die to everything you know, die to all the things you think that you are. So that the real you, the Bible says, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and dies. It abides alone. It abides alone. Which means that as a seed, you will remain like that. If your mind, I'm, I'm living. I am living. Ah, I don't arrive. Or whatever it is that you have arrived at. Maybe you have finished your school. You've gotten married. You had a job. Whatever it is that arrive means to you. You know, see, you are merely existing if you have not died. I don't care where you have reached. You must die. That is our anchor scripture for the Live Again movement. Unless a corn of wheat falls to the ground, you cannot truly live. You cannot see. That's what it means to live again. You were alive before. You now died. So alive in the sense that you were, you know, people are saying you are alive, you are alive. Hello, you are alive. Hey, hey. So you are alive, like you are a living human being that everybody can see and say, okay, this person is not dead physically, right? But you know that you, know that you, are, you, are, so, you are spiritually dead, like you are dead on the inside. That's what it means to exist. So when you now die and then you now become alive in Christ, that's what it means to truly live because you will now be alive. You will now see yourself as God made you, as God created you. 
The woman at the well met Jesus Christ and she started living again. The woman at the well, before she met Jesus Christ, she was merely existing. But after she met Jesus Christ, she started living again because he, she got new life. She started living again. Come and see the person I've met. Where did she get energy from? You cannot encounter life and still be dead. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. You cannot encounter life and still be dead. Jesus Christ said to, to Martha, I think it was Martha, when Lazarus died. said, hey, yeah, my, my, my brother has died. If you had come since, he was just complaining. And then he said, I am, again, oh, I am the resurrection and the life. The chief, ah, the chairman of the Live Again movement. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now me believe again. Now me, they resurrect people. Ha 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 ha. Hey, I am the resurrection and the life. And the mother said, hey, you will raise him up on the last day. No, not the last day. I am. Which means I am here now. I'm here with you. Do you understand me? I am here. You're talking about in the last day. I don't want you to wait for one day to live life to the full. I want you to start living life to the full now. I want you to start truly living now. I am the resurrection and the life. Why are you still existing? Why are you still complaining about the deadness around? You know, this one is happening, Nigeria is happening. Nothing else is dead. He's thinking he has been smelling for the past three days. What is your business with that? Truly living is life in Christ. And you cannot die in Christ without dying to self. Dying. Let the old you, you must ready to say, Lord, I have to pray a prayer one day. I say, God, kill any for me. Do you know what? See, there are levels when you will get so close to God. You will understand that the you that existed before cannot take you to where you are going. That the you that you thought was the you was not the real you. I said, kill any for me. Ah. Because there was, I understood how empty, how frail, how you know your planning and the things you think you have, you are and have achieved are nothing compared to who God is. And when you have God, you truly have everything. I didn't say church, I say when you have God. So, this is a call for intimacy with God. This is a call for intimacy with God. And finally, truly living is living in purpose. Living in purpose. You see, purpose is not something that makes all your problems go away. One of my ministry sisters was saying that no matter what is happening to her, she just has joy. There's always peace. There's just this, like, you just know that everything is good. You know, you, you have this fulfilled, you are fulfilled no matter what is happening. That's what it means to truly live. You're living in purpose. You've taken your mess. You've taken everything that has happened to you. You've even taken, you know, you are living a life of purpose. A life of purpose. I'm going to stop here today. But before I even stop, I want to go back to that vision I shared about the athlete. The athlete <laughs> that is wounded, I said I was going to share the solution to that athlete that is wounded. Number one, please write this down. The athlete has to acknowledge that he's wounded. The athlete has to acknowledge that he is wounded. Otherwise, he would not allow the people that want to treat him to treat him. In fact, he can keep running and injuring himself the more. You cannot make significant progress when you are wounded. You'll be moving, but you will not advance. You'll be turning around, but you're turning around in circles. You'll be going up, but you'll be coming back to the pattern that will bring you down. You will find yourself going back to your vomit, going back to the things that you think you have overcome. You will find yourself going back to the person that you think you are no longer. You will find yourself living this life as, one as a, you know, statistic, counting the days.
today is Monday. Okay, today is Thursday. Hey, wow, yeah. Come on, now wow, tell us, yeah. Before you know you're plus one, what have you, what, what have you achieved? Nothing. So the wounded athlete, number one, must acknowledge that he's wounded. Number two, <laughs> uh, the wounded athlete, the wounded athlete needs to get treatment. There is a treatment for your wound. There is a treatment for your wound. And the wound that I have, it's not the same wound that you have. It's not the same wound that somebody else has. There's something I always say, as our faces are different, so is our pain different. So, take yourself for treatment now. Number three, so who is the treatment are treating now? You need to understand that the goal is healing. Because sometimes somebody is treating you and you are hurrying the person, hurry up now. Ah, I'm tired, I beg, I want to go and run. I want to run and look at my mates are running up and they are running and they've already passed me now. See now they've already passed me. And the person that is treating you is saying, calm down. Calm down, let me treat you. Calm down, let me treat you. Calm down. Let me treat you first so that you can get healed. So that you can get healed. So the athlete, number three, I think I'm on number three, needs to know that that wound, right, that treatment, that is being treated, right, is going to take time. As in, what I mean is, don't be in a hurry. Don't hurry the person that is treating you. The process of being treated can take time. Go through the process so that you can get healed. So that you can get healed. So that you can get healed. And you see, like I was saying about wounds, there are different kinds of wounds. And what God was showing me was some wounds, you just put spirit and it's done. Some wounds, you just put spirit and it's not enough. You have to put iodine. Some wounds, after putting spirit and iodine, you have to put GV, gentle violet. Some wounds, after putting spirit and iodine, you have to put all this injection powder, all this psychiatrine and those other procaine penicillin and all those things. Some wounds, you cannot even treat the wound. You have to go for surgery. You can't treat the wound first, as in using it. What I, what I mean by that is, because surgery is also a treatment. What I mean by that is that you can't put anything on the wound first. You have to go and fix whatever is broken first inside that leg. Maybe the fracture, whatever. You can't just cover the wound. You have to go and open up the wound and do surgery. And then even in surgery, there is minor surgery. There is just, you know, just a, maybe middle line surgery and there is major surgery so the degree of wound determines the degree of treatment the degree of wound determines the degree of treatment you cannot be expecting that you have a wound that you have been carrying since childhood and you expect to just do like this and the wound will just go away no you cannot expect that you have a wound that you know is very deep and be trying to use treatment for shallow wound for that. Which takes me to the next point. Takes me to the next point. There is a specialist that knows exactly how to treat you. He knows exactly how you were wounded. He knows exactly where you were wounded. He knows the damage that has been done, even that which cannot be seen on the outside. I am talking about emotional wounds here emotional pain the person that knows you that said before i formed you in the womb i knew you that is the one that you allow to be the person that treats you he can send a doctor to you he can send a paramedic to you he can send a red cross agent to you but you must understand that he is the one that you need to go to then he will send whoever he can be a coach it can be a mentor, it can be someone that is doing a program, it can be your pastor, but your pastor is not your healer. Your mentor is not your healer. Your coach is not your healer. Your teacher is not your healer. Your husband is not your healer. Whoever that is giving you some sort of succor or making your wound to be, you know, giving you first is not your healer. 
Even the medical doctors say we care, but God heals. There is nobody that can heal you except God. There is nobody that can heal you except. I don't care if they have therapy certification from one university that is, you know, I don't care the certification. I don't care the cost of that certification. That person can only be a tool in the hands of God to heal you. So God is your healer. Are we still here? God is your healer. Now, the degree to which you take your wound to him is the degree to which he will heal you. And I said on the very first time that you have to acknowledge that you are wounded. As I speak to you, is there any wound you can remember? <laughs> From something bad that happened to you, a painful situation that got you to the point where you started existing and you stopped living. Can you remember the day you stopped living? Can you remember what happened to you that day that you know that something in you died? It is time for you to take that wound to God. Because when you don't deal with that wound, that pain will deal with you. The pain you don't deal with will deal with you. And the pain that you do not deal with will be transferred to those coming ahead of you. On one of our series that's going to come up, I'm going to talk about transgenerational pain. And you do not want to miss it. You do not want to miss it. Some of us inherited pain. And in that session I'm going to have, you're going to understand whether you have a pain you inherited. And you will understand the dangers of not dealing with pain. Or not treating your wound. Or not taking your wound to, to the healer to say, heal me. And you understand that masking up doesn't do anything but harm. And I'm going to close with this. There has been a case on the internet concerning a medical doctor who sexually abused a girl. And the wife of that doctor reported the doctor. And she has come up with so much persecution, condemnation. She has faced so much inconvenience and discomfort. And cast people have castigated her. How would you report your husband? Your husband did a bad thing. Your husband doesn't want to own up to his sin. The Bible says that whosoever covereth his sin will not prosper. So whoever is covering the sin with the person, that cause will follow the person too. And the person that covers his sin, those coming after that person, will suffer for the sin of the person because the person did not deal with the sin. Having said that, masking up and covering your pain doesn't make the pain go away masking up covering what you are going through with makeup not getting help not fixing what went wrong not doing that inner work and checking to see okay what is what are the things inside so that you can begin to connect the light inside you and begin to flourish and truly live and not merely exist our next episode i'm going to share something very interesting and it may be about inner work fingers crossed it may be about inner work and i'm going to teach you how to do the inner work and the important inner work and how you you know you understand the, how it works and really you would begin to start on this getting you know, paying attention to what you need to pay attention to so that in this life that you're living will not be a life where you merely exist, but it will be a life that you truly live. I hope we've been blessed today. I hope we've been blessed. I have been blessed. I feel refreshed. I'm so grateful to God for the strength to do this because I almost didn't. I've been so busy. God, I've been so busy. But I thank God that this happened. And there's going to be more to come. This is the very first episode of the Live Again series. And God showed up. And I trust that you were blessed. So please type in the comments, what is that one thing you're taking away from tonight's session? What is that one thing you're taking away? What is that one thing you're taking away? And if this blessed you, please do well to share. Do well to share. 
do well to share if those around you can begin to know what you know you will spend less time trying to convince people and they won't bring you down because sometimes when you are growing up people around you are not growing like you they will bring you down they will bring you down because they do not understand they do not understand that uh, uh, sometimes you go for a program come back you're so charged you've had a mindset shift but those around you will drag you back to their level so you need to share this video if you were blessed share this video and i'm waiting for you to type in what blessed you today i'm waiting i'm waiting i'm waiting for you to type in what blessed you today i'm waiting i'm waiting welcome glorina love you are late but you'd have to watch the replay so i'll post the replay on the page when we're done so i'm waiting type in what your what blessed you thank you lord Woo. thank you lord thank you lord i'm waiting for you to type in what's blessed you I'm waiting for you. I see you for Lua Care. Who else wants to type what the lens? I'm going to read it out when we're finished typing. I'm waiting for the others. Power to say. Power to say. for you type in what blessed you type in what blessed you type in what blessed you I'm waiting for you hey Follow our care and a solo gear that are here. If you were blessed, please type it in the comments. I want to see your takeaway. You alone. Our God Woo. is champion. He reigns. Type it in for. For you to type in what you learned. Oh, forevermore. Hey, forevermore. Hey, yeah, I will just type. Who else? Who else? Who else? Who else is next? Tell me your takeaway from tonight. We're done. I'm just waiting for you to now bless me with what you were blessed with. And for those who joined after you, type what blessed you. Type your aha moment. Type your aha moment. Hey, shift now. Hey. Hey, Holy Spirit, come. Chains be broken. Oh Lord, I pray, I pray, I pray, I pray that life will return. That life will return. Ah, Elijah prayed. He said, Lord, let life return to this body. Oh Lord, I pray that life will return 
to everyone that has joined this live session tonight and to everyone who will watch the replay let your life return to them let your living waters begin to flow into them oh lord let your living waters begin to flow into them afresh in the name of jesus let new life begin to come into them oh god let new life come into them oh new life new life new life new life new life New life, new life. Hey. Calm down. Thank you, Lord. Heaven open. Oh. You are amazing. Huh. See, God is, God is, God is, God is, God is. You see, when life knocked me down, ah, I had nothing else to turn to but God. You know, except God is your only option, except you understand that God is is not a is not is not is not one of your choices. God is your only choice. Except it dawns on you that God is the only way. And it's not by saying, oh Lord, it's you I have. Because many of us, we connect to many prayer programs. We are all about our problems and how God will solve those problems. But we're not saying, Lord, I want to love you. I want to understand your love. I want to operate from love. I want to learn love. I want to experience true love. True love comes from knowing God. It comes from, from understanding that, look, you don't have life without God. You cannot live again without God. There is no living again, any gain. There is nothing about life. Anything that does not have God is not life. So, it's, it's like saying you are doing something, but that thing you are doing does not carry the life of God. So, it's nothing. It's nothing. It is nothing. John said, it, you know, John, John, John chapter 1, there's a verse there that said, you know, without him was nothing made that was made. So you, 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 you would, oh God. I want to challenge every one of us that came on board tonight and that would watch this replay. Stop running from pillar to post please i beg you stay in that place of intimacy learn that stillness eh? you need to close your eyes disconnect from the world so that the eyes of your spirit will be open because these are not your real eyes i told you that i was looking at i was when my eyes were open i was not seeing the light in that encounter when my eyes were closed, I was seeing the light, which means that that light is not a physical light. It's not the kind of light that you connect to when you're looking like this. It's a light that you pray. It's a light, but see, the Bible says, let there be light. Please begin to pray for light after today. Say, Lord, let there be light. I receive your light. Let my eyes, the eyes of my understanding, the eyes of my spirit, let it be enlightened. Let me begin to see myself the way you see me. Let me begin to see things the way they really are and not what they look like. Because this world is not real. If this world is real, I will not be seeing light inside and I will come and open my eyes and I will not see light outside. This world is a shadow of the real world. So I'm going to stop there. Visit my YouTube page if you have not subscribed. Ah, go and subscribe. There are videos there that will bless you. There is a video there, how to see yourself as God sees you. There's a video there, purpose, profitability, and productivity. That video will bless you. There's a video there about stop being caged by your mindset. There are videos there that will bless you. Subscribe to my channel. And if speaks on YouTube, and begin to watch those videos and they will bless you immensely they will bless you ha they would bless you immensely all right i can see some of us has typed what we learned um follow akemi says to live again you have to die first that's my takeaway yes you have to die esologi says live not just existing and what does that mean to you what does living mean 
was existing mean to you? Because it's like you are saying the topic of the day. You just changed the topic. Tell us what you are taking away. Leave, not just existing. Are you saying you want to leave and not just exist? Is that what you're saying? Awele says, desire to leave. Uh -huh. Now, this explains more. It's like you have to desire to leave and not just exist. If you don't desire it, you're not going to get it. You have to want it. Pause. Take a moment. Take stock and move on to living. Thank you so much for sharing. And someone else is saying, Awele is saying, God is my healer. That's it. That's it. You have to deal with that pain. And you understand as we proceed, while you don't, you can, you should not keep that pain. In fact, it is better for you to find that pain and get to the pain and deal with that pain than to leave it there. Alright, so thank you so much. I had a wonderful time. A very wonderful time with all of you. And I can't wait to see you. Possibly next week, I will communicate the dates for the next Live Again series. God bless you. Remember, share this link. I'm going to be posting the replays tag your family members your friends people that you think should listen when i just post this link this video now just go under the comments and just be tagging them at this at that when they see the tag they will listen to the video they would watch it and they will thank you for it they will be blessed as well god bless you thank you everyone for showing up god bless you bye